And welcome into our broadcast here this Friday night. I'm Brett Taylor. Alongside me, Coach Chip Champion. So nice to be back. Yes, calling calling football games. Again. Yeah, you had to had to call in the bomb squad. Last I know week, it was uh, it was not fun, but you know it. it uh, fortunate enough for me, uh, everything kind of worked out, so it, it ended up not being too big of an accident, which I had. Well, still but, got all all the digits and yeah, everything. At, so uh, at yeah. my full time job, they they've now named me Trace Phalanges because well, I was wondering if we were gonna have to call you Nub or something. <laughs> No, fortunate for me, I, I got very lucky, but uh, nonetheless, we're joking about an accident I had. I've been out for a couple weeks due to that, but uh, back here tonight, and tonight, Coach Champion, Westfield traveled up I-75 to take on the Cougars from Creekside Christian Academy. Westfield comes in 5-1 and one on the season, and the Cougars of Creekside come in 0-6, oh uh, but I tell you what, uh, if size is any indication of how uh, dangerous this team might be. Uh, I, they got some big old boys down there on yeah, the sideline. They, they've got some really good looking athletes. I just don't think they've been able to put it all together this year so right. far. Um, you know, and being the first region game of the year, it's just one of these games that you're going to have to just take care of your business and go 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 handling. It's always tough on the road a little bit. Absolutely. Um, you know, especially somewhere that like here that we have not been. I've never even been on this campus. Right. Uh, so it's something sort of new. You just got to handle the environment and you just got to go play. So from my understanding, Creekside has two campuses. This is their east campus, which is I think more it's actually attached their, to their, their lower middle school and lower okay. school. So um, middle school and lower school because yeah. it's actually attached to the church here, which I think is what uh, – I forget yeah, the name of it. Something Pine Crest, or Pine something, something yeah. Baptist, Pine but View it's something. on the back side here. It's a. It kind of goes down in this hole. The I seventy five is literally yeah, right I, over the I, trees. I think their West Campus is on the other side of the interstate over there. Right. Uh, so, a bit, so, uh, so in kind of a prime location in the state of Georgia, just south of Atlanta, and Westfield's traveled up here tonight. We'll quickly go over our offensive starters while the captains meet in the center of the field. At quarterback tonight for the Hornets will be number 11, Hunter Kirkley. At the two, excuse me, three wide receivers, number two, Brody McDaniel, number three, Noah Blackman, and number five, Ryan Powers. Also, <laughs> four wide receivers, excuse me, number 26, Bishop Smallwood. And then at running back, number 24, Porter Falk. Your line looks like this, number 33, Dean Massey, number 50, Seth Andrews, number 52, Hudson McGee, number 62, Cole Miller, and number 72, Tanner Roberson. I did hear that we had – possibly some injuries from last week that yeah. may affect that starting lineup but yeah i mean we've had we've had several throughout the year absolutely uh cameron kallenbach is the is the one for this week that you know uh was not going to be able to go he um had a, a head neck injury um uh, last week that sort of gave us a little bit of a scare but um he's he's all good just a little concussion issues and gonna have to uh, sit this week and hopefully you know he'll be back and ready to go next week yeah and that's the thing uh, about Cameron his game kind of lends itself for just going about 90 to nothing so yeah well, uh, he doesn't really have an off switch well, it doesn't no, seem like no he, he's been dinged up several times throughout the year but it's just because he plays so hard right uh, and everything he does so so um, the on defense the Hornets will have a, a sub and we'll keep our eye out for that on at linebacker number 44 Cameron Kalmbach will be out tonight and the uh, defensive backs look like this. Number two, Brody McDaniel. Number 10, Billy Jack Gregory. Number 25, Trey Hardy. And number 26, Bishop Smallwood. Linebackers, again, number 16, Bryant Greer. Number 30, Brady Greer. And the defensive line will look like this. Number 50, Seth Andrews. Number 51, William Stringer. Number 55, Luke well, White. And, and number 62, Cole Miller. And Williams, actually, Stringer's out this week. He actually tore his ACL um, a week ago Thursday in uh, a JV game. So wow. he, he's not going to be in there tonight. So, you know, we're, we're dinged up. But the good thing is we've got some depth. You know, our numbers um, have been increasing over the last few years. And, you know, the, the quality of our players has also done so. So we're, we should be in, in, in pretty good shape. We, you know, if you're talking about a numbers game, we're, we're a whole lot better off than Creekside is tonight. I think I counted 23 or 24 guys on, on uh, their sidelines. So uh, you would hope that attrition over time would, um, would help us out. Uh, while you were running through the starters that had the coin toss, and we actually won the coin toss and deferred to the second half. So the uh, Creekside 
Academy. What are they? Wildcats. They're Cougars. Cougars. That's Creekside, right. Cougars. Creekside Christian that. Cougars. They're they'll get the ball to start the game. Right. So uh, again, this may be a little tricky for us. We're actually uh, our camera is set up in the stands, pretty high shot, especially since it's kind of built up here. But the uh, the where we're located is actually kind of off the center. So we'll be blocked at times, but we'll try to make the best of it. It looks like it possibly is. I cannot see numbers. Mm. Yeah, I can't. they got those gold numbers. It's hard. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to see. Uh, possibly number, it and I'm five? looking through chain link fence. I think I it's number five, and Donovan seven. Anderson. And I see seven. But we don't have a seven on our roster, so I'm not – sure exactly who he is yeah we will uh try to figure that out but yes it looks like number seven i don't believe that's number one it possibly could be but i think i saw number one on the sidelines yeah well right and, there and we you know uh we don't have the the best vantage point absolutely so we'll do our best so bear with us number 14 jackson slade will be kicking off for the hornets here tonight and we're just about set here for kickoff at 7 28 p.m Slade puts toe to leather. Ball caught at about the, we'll call it, 20-yard line and yep. tackled closely right there. He actually slipped down. Looks like that's going to be on about the 25, somewhere in there. So Westville will go on defense to start tonight's contest. And it's first and 10 for the Creekside Cougars at their own 24, excuse me, 25-yard line. Again, bear with us on <laughs> and watching a little bit of where we these. are. These guys, they've got some – looks like some really good athletes that you can't let them get in space and get going because they'll be hard to catch if they get loose. Right. So, it probably maybe harkens back a little bit to the Terrell game for Westfield. Yep. Comes out and actually a single back and hand it off up front. Nowhere to go, really. Stacked up nicely. And Westfield – going to force a second down and long here early for Creekside. I'll use my term that I hadn't used in a while, a swarm of Hornets. Absolutely. Um, Doing a great job there. Uh, the usual suspects on that defensive line really coming up and causing havoc. Yeah, I would think that uh, even though they attack the middle right there, eventually they're going to have to try to get their speed to, to our edge. Right. So second down and 10 we'll call it. Rolling out here, trying to throw the ball out in the flat. The ball is knocked away and will be incomplete. Third and ten now. Cooper Avery there on the pressure made the quarterback get rid of it way before he wanted to. So Joshua Gibson was the intended receiver on that play. It'll be third down and ten. That was Donovan Brasley, I believe. Creekside, pretty big basketball school, made it to the state championship yeah, game last yeah, year, lost to John Millage game you and I called oh yeah. over yeah, in that uh, was a fun, That was a fun game to call, actually. Absolutely. Ball snap, going to roll again out here to his left, and ball just out of the reach of the receiver. And in coverage would be number five, Ryan Powers, intended for number 11, Christopher Ernest. Yeah, they have um, Shaquille O'Neal. Is actually a big contributor to the school. Uh, his son, Shakir, Shakir, um, played, played, last for, year. played yeah. for him last year. I don't know where he went to school, but he was a good basketball player. Yeah, I think he had. Uh, I think he was like a three or a low four star. He ended up yeah. going somewhere, uh, kind of on the Sun Belt, yeah. Conference USA type level. I can't remember where. Yeah. But still, I mean, <laughs> no, they Division had a, One they, scholarship, yeah, you, and, you can play basketball. And, you know, we actually played them in Perry last year in basketball and football. So, uh, they've got good athletes all over the place. Back deep to receive for Westfield on fourth down is Ryan Powers. He's going to let that bounce. He's going to pick it up and run and gets up the sidelines, finds some more room, crosses the 40-yard yeah. line. And there's a flag down that came out before the punt, so it's be interesting to see what this is. Yeah, it looks like it's probably going to be something late, potentially. No, it was. This was actually early. This was. Was actually, it during the play? It was before the kick, even. You know, as soon as the ball was snapped. So 10:57 to go here in the first quarter. Westfield has the football. It's looks like it's illegal substitution wow. on uh, on the Cougars. So. I would think that we would decline that penalty and take the ball right where it is. Yeah, because that's a re-kick situation, I believe, is it not? Uh, yes, that yeah, that would actually be a re-kick. So take the ball right where it is and roll with it. 
So it'll be first and 10 for Westfield at the Cougar 30, 30, 33, 33, 34, somewhere in there. So Coach Champion's yep. going to have to be my eyes here. He's got a little bit better vantage point away my, from the I brought, fence. I brought my glasses, so <laughs> you're in better shape today. So, again, Westfield will come out. They have four wide receivers out wide, two to the left, two to the right. Porter Falk offset Kirkley in the backfield. Going to snap uh -oh. the ball over Kirkley's head. He's just going to fall on it. Good job yeah. of Creekside closing in. That will be a loss of probably 11 on the play. Yep. He's going to spot the ball at the 45. Um, a good job by, by Hunter right there to not try to pick that ball up. and, yep. and Well, that was, you just take your losses there. That's a dangerous play. Creekside did a good job closing in quickly and forcing them to dive on it. Like you said, you try to pick that one up, you're in a, you're in a bad situation. Yeah, no doubt. So Westfield comes out second down and 21. They're going to run the jet sweep here to McDaniel, and no, they're going to throw a holding flag. Yeah, that's, gonna, that's Noah. Excuse me, Noah Blackman. Yeah. And that's going to be a uh, touchdown, but it will come yeah. back. Yeah, that one's going to come back. Mm. Yeah, that's going to come back for Holden. So Westfield, and they're, the referees, again, staying with the theme here in breast cancer. I believe this yep. is breast cancer month. Yep. Breast cancer awareness month. Got the pink flags out there, so it'll be holding against Westfield. Yep. That'll bring the football back. And that'll be right, I think, uh, close to the original line of – or not the original, yeah, but well, the starting the, line of scrimmage. Yeah. You actually got two flags down, both for the same foul. Yeah. Yeah, I think our uh, I think our tackle got a little overzealous there trying to keep the edge. So now it's going to bring up second and forever. Uh, what, it's going to be about 30. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Westfield has not done themselves any favors. They're going to set up a screen, screen pass. to Porter Falk, yep. and he's got some good yardage, probably picks yep. up about eight or nine on the play. Ooh, he picked up more than Did that. He? he picked up about Oh yeah, you're right. about 18 on that on that play. So Westfield Yeah, he went from the 45 he actually gained uh, 15 on the play. It's hard for us to see up here, folks. Just bear with us a little bit. So Westville will have uh, about third and 15 yep. to go here. And they try to get – looks like they tried to get Creekside a jump there. And Kirkley drops back, looking to throw. He's going to pump fake. He's going to roll to his left, looking to throw again, throws deep. And ball picked pick off. off. Yep. Great play right there. I cannot make out the number who picked seven. it off. That's seven. Uh, ball was intended. I think that's – was that uh, Bishop Smallwood that it was intended for? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, you know, if if you're a Hornet fan, that's just as good as a punt right there, yeah, actually. Probably almost better. better. Yeah, almost better because it, it looks like you're going to be pinned inside the 10 there. So, uh, you'll take that. I mean, uh, yeah, actually it's going to look like the ball is going to be spotted on like the one. So, um, that actually worked out pretty well for us, even though in the stat sheet it's not going to work out real well for Hunter, but uh, just as good or better than a punt. So. Right, absolutely. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, sometimes you just make that decision because you may get a, a but you, pass, interference, pass interference. interference you, you or, like you said, if it gets picked off, and Westfield going to jump off yep. sides here and committing all kinds of yep. penalties so far in a game. Yep, offside. Westfield just needs to settle down a little bit. Yep, yep. we just got to gather ourselves a little bit and um, get a little bit of composure and just start playing ball. So 9 9 to go, first and five, and Westfield going to swallow up that run play on the inside. I'm trying to see if I can get a number right there. It looks like uh, Dean Massey maybe on the tackle. Yeah, I don't think they got maybe uh, – They actually got – Oh, wow, they yeah. did pick up a lot. They Four got, yards on the play, so it'll bring up second down and one. Yep. And they're – looks like they're – looks like they're about the 11-yard line maybe. Yeah. Somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah, somewhere in, in that neighborhood. 
Yeah, it's going to be a a short second and one right here. So going under center again. Going to fake the handoff. Looking to throw. Going to throw deep. Ryan Powers on the outside. He was beat a little bit. That yeah. looked like it was intended for number eight. Yeah. That was Gibson well, on the Ryan, intended he, reception. He, he beat Ryan by a step off the line, but Ryan recovered really well. And, you know, that was going to have to be a – Force the tight window yeah, that's there. Gonna, that was going to have to be a perfect pass to even have a chance right there. So, And as a DB, that's what you want to do. You want to you make that window as, as small as you possibly can right there. Yeah, well, what I uh, what I like there from Creekside is just giving yourself a chance third and short, and yep. Westfield does a good job right there, bottling up the run game. Yep. We'll see. Looks like we're gonna see if we force a gonna, fourth down there. Yeah. We'll wait for the we'll officials' be, yeah. call. They're it gonna, looks like it may be a little first, short. Yeah, they're going the white hat is signaling first down. Okay. So, so he, he got just enough. I mean, you have the luxury of doing that if you're Creekside when it's when it's second and less than a yard. You no can doubt. Throw that ball and then. Hopefully, um, you know, pick up that easy yard on third down. Yeah, so bear with us here at our first break. We're going to make some switches on uh, the camera and uh, get a little bit more height and uh, some more space for people to sit. But right now, Westfield trying to get the ball back yep. from Creekside. Nice job right there by Bishop Smallwood uh, sealing the edge right there. I think it was 23 on, on the carry for them. That's uh, Travis Moon. Um, nice job right there of maintaining leverage right there. And I'm, I know the coaches preached all week, do not give up the edge, do not give up the edge, do not give up the edge. And Right. Uh, you know, like we talked about before, these guys have got some speed. And if, if, they, if you make it a track meet, we're probably not going to win. So a pick up a four on the play, second down and six. Again, not very good field position after the interception. Looking to roll back, going to throw it out to nobody. Yep. Mm -hmm. we, had good, we had good pressure right there. Um, we had several guys. Um, who was that? Bryant Greer, I know, was on the play. and looked like we had a couple of our linemen that had snuck through, too. So it'll be 6.47 to go here in the first quarter, third and six for Creekside. This is a big play right here for the Hornets' defense. We need to stop and force a punt. Yeah, Westfield hasn't been very clean so far in this game. Penalties, bad snap, and then an interception. So kind of a just a whole uh, whole handful of a mess right there. But they got a well, chance to get good field position here if they can turn them away. Third and six. And they're going to roll. Looking to throw out in the flat. They get it out there, but great tackle immediately yeah, that was a nice from job. Westfield. I'm trying to see who that was. That was, uh, that was Bishop Smallwood on that tackle right there. Uh, that one looked dangerous, and all of a sudden Bishop closes the gap right there and makes a really nice open field tackle. 6.25 to go here in the first quarter. Fourth and six for the Cougars. And you would think that we would get some good field position out of this thing. Absolutely. It looks like the ball is going to be inside the 20-yard line. Kick is away. That's a high kick, a decent kick. Powers fields it at his own 40. Excuse me, at the Creekside 44. He gets upfield, picks his way across the sidelines, and he loses the ball out of bounds. Yep. He needs to do a little bit better job of securing the ball. You know, I, you missed it last week, but he had a 99-yard touchdown uh, return off of a kickoff last week. I watched it. Yeah, <laughs> you you watched. The, I was tuning in. You watched the Larry Daryl and Daryl show. Yeah, hey, hey, they were they gave some pretty good insight yeah, from no, uh, they did. They did from a, like a uh, a coach's perspective of what you're looking at. Was and, that that was the it was what do they call it the coach's cast? Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who was Mike Leach and who was uh, Dana Holgerson <laughs> well, and see, all those guys? Y'all are all too young to remember Larry, Daryl, and Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's who I equivalent them to. So, all right, looks like Creekside's going to call timeout right here. So Creekside will call timeout. Their first timeout of the half. We'll take a quick break and come back with the rest of the first quarter. Westfield and Creekside knotted up here with no score with – Mm, let's see, 5.57 to go. Call it six minutes. <laughs> here in the first quarter. 
We'll be back right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My mother and grandmother are cancer survivors, so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now, and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My mother and grandmother are cancer survivors, so I just... Sorry, hopefully Logan didn't make you too sick, but we had to switch some stuff out and... Finally, we found the <laughs> found the play there. Porter Falk on the carry right there, uh, right up the middle for a gain of about six on the play. So to bring up second down and four, what uh, Logan's going to have to try to level things out there. We had to move the camera, and Westfield will have second and six and hand the ball off up the middle. Porter Falk will go into the end zone, almost Touchdown, untouched. Hornets. Yep. Touchdown Hornets, six to nothing. And the Hornets score first after getting great field position on that drive. 5.25 to go here in the first quarter. And it all goes back to, even though it's not doesn't look good on the stat sheet, that interception right there, pinning uh, Creekside back, a defensive stop. You got really good field position right there and a relatively easy score. So I have to give a shout-out to my dad, Mr. Frank Taylor, coming in the clutch, running around the corner to – Best Buy hooking us up with an audio cable because uh, we accidentally left. We accidentally left something. That kick is up and good. He, he, You'll pay for it later. I promise you that. I'm sure. Well, I already bought him dinner tonight, yep. so we'll stay here since we uh, uh, had the quick timeout earlier. And Westfield is on top 7-0, 525 to go here in the first quarter. And the Hornets finally put a, a much better-looking drive together, as you said. Probably uh, – uh, got to thank their previous interception because it gave them great field position. Well, when, you, when you start on the plus 30 or right. somewhere in there, you know, you, you feel like you ought to do it fairly easy. Uh, hopefully that will be the spark we need to get, get moving a little bit faster than we were in the first part of the game. Logan, zoom out a little bit if you can. Zoom out a little bit if you can. So Slade will be on to kick for the Hornets on top seven to nothing. Westfield again had trouble on their first drive. Kind of went backwards, penalties and bad snap, and then threw an interception. But again, a kind of a punt interception, if yeah. you will, and then gets great field position after the after the defensive stand. Slade kicks off. It will be fielded inside the twenty and upfield. Closing in quickly. Still a decent return, yeah, though, nice out return to the 35 right yard line. I believe uh, that's, is that number eight? Yeah. Joshua uh, Gibson? Six or eight. I can't tell. It's, it's either Xavier Grimsley or Joshua Gibson, one of the it's two. Eight. It's eight. eight. You can so, see the back of his jersey a lot better than you can the front. His front sort of wadded up right there. So Joshua Gibson with a good return there. He's kind of been a playmaker for them so far yeah, in the game that, that they are a, looking to that, get the ball in the hands they, of. They set their wedge in the middle of the field and he slipped through. Um, and pretty good yardage right there. Now, they start in pretty good field position. So first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. The Hornets on top 7 and nothing. Creekside did get a first down on their last drive, aided yep. by a penalty from Westfield jumping off sides and a good run by them. And they're going to stay in the eye formation, but yeah, not a whole lot a, there. That's, that's old-school football. I like it. That's <laughs> – you know, they were actually in the aisle with uh, unbalanced formation right there. The um, problem is, I think Creekside's going to – it's going to be tough sledding yep. up the middle against Westfield. Yep. They're just so I, stout in the middle. Well, and you saw they tried to attack the edge several times in that last drive with that little sweep action on the first play and then that, uh, that pass out in the flats in the second, which is nothing more than an extended handoff. So Right. So, again, in the offset eye, a little bit better success yep. there. Good job running. Picks up about probably six on the play, we'll call yeah, it. That was their line actually moved us that time, and uh, and then the back hit the hole hard. Now, that is number five. 
That is Donovan Anderson. Well, it looks like they got a lineman shaking up a little bit on the play. So we potentially have a That's Houston all. Healthcare yeah. injury timeout. Yeah. We'll wait to see. He's up. He's going to have to come off the field. That's big joker right there, number 74. 74 yeah. is Bryson Clyatt, I think. Yep. Bryson yeah. Clyatt. Those, those guys usually don't get their names called many times, but – uh, he was right in the middle. <laughs> he was right where they ran behind that time. And I think as big as that joker is, I'd believe running behind him too. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to have some, some beef up he, in front he, of you. He made, he makes some of our guys who I think are pretty big look small. So third down and five, going to hand the ball again up the middle. Tough yeah. sledding, picks up a couple. Gave it to the fullback right there. That's a JT Wall special yeah, right there 20, over the 40-yard line. That's <laughs> 23. That's uh, Travis Moon. Yeah, it gets out to about the 43-yard mm -hmm. line, we'll call it. It'll bring up fourth down and two. Yeah, and I feel sure that they're going to go They're going to go for it. Wouldn't be shocked to see them give it that fullback again or that or that lead that they ran on. I think they're going to try to uh, go on a, a hard, hard count, count hard right count. here. Yep. Oh, and no, the receiver. Man. Receiver didn't get the message. No, receiver hurts their case there. They got yeah. a little bit of movement, but Westfield didn't jump into the neutral zone. Yeah. I think that's going to push. Yeah, now, now I think you don't have a choice but to punt the ball. Right. Well, and you have an opportunity here. You put together a pretty good couple plays to, to try to flip the, the field yeah. a little bit mm -hmm. if you're Creekside. So. And their punter is number 70. Uh, you two linemen punting the ball tonight. That is number 70, Darren Evans. Yep. Back deep to receive, number five, Ryan Powers. He's got to be careful right yep. here. Yep. That ball starts to die. You might just want to get out of the way. Secure the ball or get out of the way, just get the possession. So Evans' punt is up and ugly, which is good for them. Mm -hmm. And Ryan going to field it, though. Gets up field, eludes a couple of tacklers. Good job, though. I think number six ends up making the play. That's Xavier Crim Grimsley. No, actually, that's number three. Is that number three? Yeah. Goodness gracious. Ian Wright. I'm glad I brought my glasses tonight. I'm glad you can see because I cannot see these numbers. I can see Westfield's number because it's dark, but that yellow is hard to pick up. This kind of reminds me of this setting, even though it's uh, the, this would be on the other side of the interstate a little further out. It kind of reminds me of Trinity Sharpsburg back before they did all their – yeah. Upgrades and renovations. Uh, I, could, I could see that. Back in the back in the early years of them playing football. Early years of mid-Georgia sports. Right, too. yeah. yeah. Second year, I believe. That's a handoff up the middle to Porter Falk. He will cross midfield, get out to the 45-yard line of Creekside, actually the 44, and the Hornets are in business yet yeah. again. First yeah. and 10 after the big first down run from Porter. I think we've found something now. So under three minutes to go in Westfield, has a first down. Coming out of the game will be number 54, Jason Lovelace for Creekside. And Westfield trying to keep it rolling here. They don't sub. And Porter Falk up the middle. Good job closing down on him. He only picks up about three or four on the play. And they did that one a little bit better this time. Yeah, they clamped down in, in that gap to try to grab him. And Porter's so strong, it took a couple to bring him down. Yeah, I felt sure Coach Robinson was going to keep running that until they made an adjustment. Second down and six, the Hornets on the move again, not subbing. They're calling everything from the line of scrimmage. We haven't seen a whole lot of huddling this year from the Hornets. No. Three wide to the right, one to the left, and a handoff to Porter again. He has a big hole up the middle. Gets to the outside, cuts back in, gets back to the outside, and he's brought down inside the 25-yard line. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be about the 15, but don't quote me on that. So first and 10, I'm having to guess at the yardage, to be honest yeah. with you, because I no. can't see. <laughs> So, you got the eagle eyes tonight. Just, just, just sound confident. <laughs> we'll, we'll make believe we know what we're doing, right? So, the Hornets had the ball under two minutes to go here in the first quarter, driving yet again up 7 to nothing. And ball a little high. Kirkley going to keep it. Cuts back, gets to the outside, nice and he's moves. got a chance to get to the end zone. Great block yeah. on the outside. And that yeah. is a touchdown by the Hornets. Hunter Kirkley. From about 16 yards yeah, he out. he made two really nice moves to set up blocks and make guys miss. So a great job right there. The offense taking advantage of a pretty decent return by Ryan Powers, but they did have to drive it a little bit further this time. Yep. Looks like we're going to run a two-point conversion right here. And Kirkley's going to get in. 
for the two points. Hey. Well, guess they saw something on well, film, we, obviously. No, we, we came out in a little uh, odd. Uh, little I'd have to look water, at it. Well, water bucket no, drill or whatever water it's called. Bucket, it looked <laughs> like um, what they would call, and I'd have to look, go back and look at it on film, it looked like a, the old polecat um, formation and mm. got some space to let Kirkley do what he wanted to do with it. And we actually had – he, he could have flipped the ball out to Ryan out here on – uh, split wide right there with two blockers could probably could have walked in as well. So, so we'll stay here. Westfield again leads fifteen to nothing now after the converted two point play, and Slade will be set to kick off here with a minute forty one to go, first quarter. Hornets have put together back to back drives to take a two score lead, and Creekside. They've done pretty well moving the football. They just haven't been able to string together yep, three like, or four plays. Yep, seems like we've gotten stops, or they've made a mistake at just the wrong time for them, right time for us. That ball taken off the bounce, that's a hard one to get. He yep. gets up field and tackled, call it about the 30-yard 30 30. line? Like about the 30, somewhere in there. 31, 32, somewhere yep. in there. Westfield, that kick from Slade, it looked like a spinning – Sidewinder, if you will, down the field, and probably a tough one to handle on the bounce, but a yeah. good job right there. I think that was that number six or number five. It's hard to tell. I think it was Donovan yeah. Anderson potentially. I think eight lines up on this side, which is Joshua Gibson. Uh, again, I'm not the greatest with numbers week in and week out, anyways, but yellow numbers are very hard for me. Well, and when <laughs> these new jerseys, as tight as they are on the front, they always get wadded up around the shoulder pads, and it's Hard to make out those single-digit numbers, six, five, eight, and all those. So Donovan Brasley will come to the line of scrimmage, hands the ball off up the middle. Not a whole lot cooking there for the Cougars. Yeah. And tackling on the play, looks, looks like, like – One of the Bryant boys and Dean Massey and – who was that? That's Bryant Yeah, Greer. I saw Dean Massey yeah. in there. saw one of the Greer boys. I saw – Brody McDaniel standing around the pile. I don't yep. think he was making the tackle, though. I think he was just coming up in support. He's trying to get that assist. Yep. Got to be there to try yep. to strip it away, I yep. guess. So second and seven with just right at a minute to go here in the first quarter. Cougars have decent, decent field position at about their 35-yard line, and they'll come under center, staying in that I formation, going to hand the ball off here on a kick play. They kick out that defensive end, a pretty decent pickup, probably about four yards on the play. Yeah, and that was Ryan Powers and Dean Massey on the tackle there. So I'll, I'll say that's probably third down and three. Uh, so, again, here's the play where it seems Creekside can't really get over yep. the hump. Westfield kind of bows his neck and is able to yep. either st st uh, stuff him at the line of scrimmage or get a loss on a play, and we'll see if that holds true here. Under 30 seconds to play, and it's a big third down for Creekside. The old school coach in me likes this, likes this power eye, double tight power eye, or power eye formation. So dropping back, looking to throw, going to throw a stop route. Ball caught, and that'll be a first down yep. for Creekside. That'll be the last play. Uh, well, wait up. Yeah, well, they'll they'll wind it. Yeah, it'll. My clock ran out, but they'll wind, and that will probably do it yeah, on the Billy first Jack quarter. Gregory there on the tackle. Yeah. And that's yeah. the last play of the first quarter. Westfield heads to the second quarter on top 15 to nothing. We'll take a quick break and come back with the rest of the first half right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My Mother and grandmother are cancer survivors, so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now, and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. Well, I like how Westfield is uh... Just the, uh, the family atmosphere that we have here. Uh, the teachers are just great, the coaches are great. Even though I was not here when I started school, I came in and it was like everyone acted like 
I had been here the whole time. It's an environment where everyone just accepts you and wants to get to know you like they would have known you like all of their friends that have been here since the beginning of grade school. I just like the atmosphere that you have here. Everybody, they truly care about you. Everyone in my grade, we're so close together. Um, I think of them as my brothers and sisters almost because they know me so well and I know them so well. I think the most important thing that happened to me so welcome back on the campus of Creekside Academy. Under center is Brasley, and he will hand the ball off, getting wide there, but a great job of tackling. That's Donovan Anderson on the carry, and like, I am trying to yeah, see. Yeah, like Ryan Powers on the, on the tackle over there. Ryan Powers, we'll give it to him. Yeah, we did a good job of stringing that one out to the sideline a little bit. Yeah, he had some speed yeah. there, but again, he, you forced him to bounce, and then you kind of rallied to the play, so. Yep. A decent pickup for Creekside. Again, they stay second and eight's not bad. You stay kind of right there where you need to be on schedule. You're going to have to maybe pick up an extra yard here, maybe three or four yards on this play to try to get yourself in good position on third down. But Westfield also stepped up there on that play, stringing it out. It looked like it could have been a little bit more successful yeah. than it was. Yeah, it looked like trouble to begin with. So faking the handoff, looking to roll, and a great job. Is that – that's Cole, Cole Miller, Miller, isn't yep. it? Cole Miller on the sack right there. So Maybe great a, job, Cole, right there, getting of, in there. Loss of about 10 on the play. And Brasley, he tried that pump fake, and Cole just kind of squashed down well, on top of well, him. Well, that was a that was a design bootleg right there, and Cole did a good job of sniffing that thing out real quick and was right where he needed to be. He wasn't – was he a defensive end on that play? Yes, I think, I think he was. I was about to say, that's a great, great job of containment yeah. by a tackle if he's inside. Looks yeah, like we may have Creekside's another timeout from yeah. Creekside. So we'll take a quick break with them. The Cougars trying to get a, a drive together. It'll be third down and about 18 when we come back. You're watching Hornet football right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My Mother and grandmother are cancer survivors, so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now, and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. I have four grandparents who are still living, and I realized after some research that this was the best way I could protect them and the community at large. As a physician, I feel it's important to get vaccinated for the masses to prevent uh, overcrowding of our ICUs. I got the vaccine to protect myself and also to protect my mother. I would ask people when you consider getting vaccinated for the COVID-19 virus, not only consider your own risk stratification, but also your role in the community. I have four grandparents who are still living. And, and welcome back here to McDonough, Georgia. Westfield has traveled up I-75. We're in the second quarter, and the Hornets are on top 15 to nothing. Creekside has a big third down and 18 here to try to extend their drive. Brasley in the backfield, in the shotgun that is, looking to drop back and throw. He's going to throw a screen. He's got some blocking out in front, and... A great job of running upfield, but then a good tackle by yeah, Westfield. Yeah, Brian Greer did a really good job of fighting off a block right there and uh, and making a good open field tackle because if he doesn't, we're, we're in trouble right there. So fourth and four after a 14-yard pickup, and, and I like, believe that was Anderson on the yeah, reception. Like the uh, Creekside has decided they're going to go for this one right here. So, going to have Brasley yeah. in the shotgun yet back again. In that double twins formation. Yep. Two by two look here with the back offset to the right. Looking to roll. Going to throw in the flat. And he's going to get upfield and pick up the first down. That's number 20. Was that 23, 20, Travis? 23. Moon? Yeah, that's the fullback right there. He, he did a really good job. Didn't look like a fullback when he made that move right and there. He, I tell you what, they got some good looking athletes. Oh, I told you. You know, they look really, really good, and, they, and they've got some athletes. They just – I think the numbers game is going to mess with them when it's all said and done. Right, yeah. I mean, it's tough to play both ways yeah. and not have any any blows, so to speak. Especially when your opponent is is only got a handful of guys that are two platooning. Right, as Brasley goes back up under center, 
Uh, just a single back behind him, nowhere to go. Number five, Donovan Anderson, uh -huh. as you said, a swarm yep. of Hornets there on yep. the play. Maybe picks up a half a yard. Yeah, it's not going to be much. Looks like they're going to spot the ball right on the 40-yard line. So, looks like they might give him a yard or two. But um, he probably – well, they're gonna, looks like they're going to give him two on the play. He probably is stopped for a loss, but he did a really good job of keeping his feet moving and driving the pile uh, in his direction. So the Hornets, unfortunately not able to stop him for a loss, but still a positive play for the defense uh, on that first down. Any, anything under three yards is a positive for right. the defense. Oh, and, and Westville like going to jump across we there. Jumped across. And the numbers game may be why you're seeing Creekside under center more, trying to drive sure. that clock down. Oh, yeah. Help well. yourself out, especially, uh, you know, not trying to wear people out. Well, that's uh, – that's what you have to do. I mean, you have to try to find a way to shorten the game and, uh, the you know, just don't get in a hurry about things. And, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why we want to speed things up a little bit. So, going to fake the handoff, looking to throw in the flat, and that ball is thrown way out in front, third and three now. Yep, Bryant Greer again on the pressure. We called his name several times tonight already. Uh, I think he – Made a uh, quarterback was five right there. Anderson give it up a little bit quicker than he actually wanted to. So it's going to be third and what, a long two, really three. Yeah, third and two and a half, three we'll call it. Uh, Here goes the ambulance getting on the interstate. Yeah, that's never good. No. Nope. That's not a good sign. No. Nope. <laughs> I'm sure it happens a lot up this uh, way. Yeah. Inside the Westfield 35-yard line, third and three. Best drive of the night for the Cougars. 8-10 to go here in the second quarter. Going to hand the ball off and nowhere to go. Beating the block yeah. out there. And Westfield drops oh, like, Moon for a loss there. Look like Cole Miller again on the tackle. Um, but it was actually Bryant Greer that did the, did the job of blocking the hole up right there. Uh, I don't know. Creekside has seen something they like running to that side of our our defensive formation. I don't know whether they want to follow those linemen or if they've seen something and, and like that side. But so far tonight, that side, especially Bryant, has really stepped up and played well. I think Westfield's probably going to have to do a good job, especially at the defensive line, of trying to retrace its steps. Yeah. This may be a screen-type call well, right here or uh, a flat I'm, pattern. I'm shocked. I really thought they might go back to that two-by-two two look that they had. They had some success with it. They're going to be in the traditional eye. Looks like they had a legal and, procedure on the play. And had something something the official didn't like. 7-17 to go. There's another flag on Creekside. And it's going to be an illegal substitution against Creekside. So that will bring up fourth and ten. Yep. That uh, – you. Usually they usually they get that one pretty easy. All right, now the question is, do you still go for it or do you try to punt right here? I don't know. The, You're kind of in that yeah, no man's land territory. They, they, they've declared they're going to go for it. They're right at the 40-yard line of Westfield. Yep. They're under center, double tight, yep. a receiver on each side. Looking to throw. Going to throw the comeback route, and it's nice complete. Pass. Yep. That's a that's a nice that's a nice route, nice throw and catch right there by the Cougars. But so Brasley, a nice pass. He, 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 really, I did not see who I that think was. It was. Seven that caught the ball. Yeah, I, we do he, not have him on the roster. Yeah, well, I mean, he ran that route. He needed ten. He he ran the route twelve. Right. I mean that that's some. Yeah. You, you don't see anything's undefendable, but that was a really good execution by the, by the Cougars. I think that's Moon on the carry yep. again. And up the middle, again, just tough sledding for the Cougars yep. on that Westfield defensive front. But, again, this is best drive of the night for Creekside, and they're doing a good job moving that, the football. That was number 30. Brady Greer, I think, was one of the Hornets on the, on the tackle that time. So they pick up three on the play. It'll bring up second down and seven for Creekside. And those big old guys they got up front are just leaning on us a little bit right there and their backs are just finding those little gaps. 
Oh, good job right there. Is that Cole Miller again on the tackle for the Hornets. So that's going to be a loss of about two or three on the play. That's going to bring up a relatively long third down for the Cougars. Thanks. Sorry. Trying to coach Logan here on the camera to get us some uh, – maybe a little bit tighter shot because it's, it's just a difficult camera angle right now. Just trying to get as much action as we can. So third down and nine after the drop, uh, after the loss on the play. Yeah. Again, getting in that area over there where there's kind of shadows on the field. And it looks like we may have an illegal procedure. Whistle. whistle. Ooh, whoa. Ooh. Hopefully he's okay. Oh, they're going to throw yeah. a flag. But there was a whistle. So there's a flag on the field. What, why we keep blowing a whistle? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I wonder if one of them has one of those electronic whistles. I don't know. And it malfunctioned. Because it was blowing, but... Yeah, I don't know. That was sort of an odd situation right there. Heard a faint whistle and, but you heard uh, the whistle. It kept going yeah, in a yeah, kind of consistent interval. Yeah. I wonder if it's one of those electronic ones that got, yeah. like the button got stuck or yeah, something. I don't know. I forgot that referees are using well have been using some. those because of not obviously with the COVID situation has been. Uh, out there for a couple of years now. Some have, I'm assumed, haven't switched yeah. back to the old school blow it. But I don't know. I'm just speculating at best. It's going to be a false start on. So, in the end. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I'm not sure. So we're just kind of standing by here awaiting the official. Yeah. I think what you're going to get is you're going to get uh, – you got a, a late hit on us um, and a false start on them. So that doesn't – I think that's what the Creekside coach is, uh, is questioning. Yeah. I think that's Coach – Renard Ross is asking, hey, well, we you, got hit late there, and uh, well, you got, we, we know that there's a whistle issue, but still, uh, my quarterback can't lose his helmet yeah, after I mean, getting busted but, up. But in the end, it cost them five yards on the false start. Well, I guess they're going to say that that we couldn't – that the whistle was – I don't know. I well, like you said, I believe there was probably an initial whistle yeah. that was very faint that some people heard. Other, Obviously, the players didn't. And then they started blowing it again. Yeah. And yeah I don't know. That was uh, – that's odd right there. Yeah, I think Westfield probably gets the best, <laughs> best of that yeah. one. Third well. and 14, we'll call it, inside the Westfield 35-yard uh, line, probably down to about, what, the 32 or so. In the gun here, Brasley dropping back, looking to throw. Going to throw deep to the left, just way over the head of the receiver. And I believe yeah. that's number seven yet again. Let me see uh, if I can pick up his yeah. name. No, Joshua Gibson, number eight. Okay. Um, and we have Billy Jack Gregory. Uh, and I think that's Brady Greer maybe on the on the coverage. Um. Pretty pretty good job right there. They've had their most success out of that double twins look. So 4.35 left to go in the first half, and it seems like Creekside has had the ball for this entire quarter. Second quarter, yeah. They've done a good job of moving uh, yeah. it. They're just starting to go back right now. Yeah. Big play right here for the, for the Hornets to try to get us a stop. They went to the screen the last time they needed a big play on third or fourth yep. and long, but Brasley going to throw deep. 
down the middle, and that's going to be yeah. a defensive pass interference. Yeah. They ran together. It looks like that's on. Is that going to be Bishop Smallwood? Uh, I think maybe it's going to be on Bishop. I don't think that's Trey Hardy. I know that uh, you got 25 and 26, yeah. but I think that was Bishop back there. So that should give Creekside a first down, though. Yeah. No? Yep. Just by probably a yard. Well, yeah, it's going to be close. Isn't it? Yeah. Because it, it's not an automatic first down anymore. No, it, but it is 15, correct? Yeah, it is correct. So I think that's going to be – it looked like it was about fourth and 14, so it should be a yeah. first down by just a yard, but keeps Creekside's drive alive. Well, I'm trying to – Yep, pass interference against the, the Hornets. So it's going to be a first down, yep. So yep. first and ten yep. inside the – let's see, I'm trying to see where it is. I think it's right at the 20-yard line. Yeah, it's going right, to – actually, yeah, I think it's going to be inside 19, 18, somewhere in there. Going to snap the ball back. Looking to throw in the flat. No. Ball knocked yeah. away or behind him. Had a little bit of pressure right there, and I think it forced him to throw the ball behind his intended receiver. It was Cooper Avery on the uh, pressure, and it looked like uh, Brady Greer on the coverage there. Now, Cooper's a youngster, right? Uh, he's a junior, I think. Is he a junior? Yep. Uh, yes, he's thinking. a junior. I don't know why I was thinking he was a youngster. Yep. No, he's, he's a junior. That's still a youngster for me and you. Well, that's true. Brasley in the backfield. Shotgun. Snap. Throwing it across the middle on the drag yeah, pattern and, and just threw it, behind him. threw it behind him. I think that was number eight. Yeah. That's Joshua Gibson on the yep. intended reception there. I think uh, Creekside has abandoned their run a little bit more than I probably would at this point. Well, you get in this gun, you maybe could look yeah. to run a draw. Westfield's very uh, downhill, yeah. if you will, on well, the rush plays. I guess I'm just too old school. I like to, to run the ball on first and second down to make that third down a little bit shorter than ten. Right, especially in this case. If you get down in there and you get third and short, that's probably going to be a fourth and short if you don't pick it up, too. Yep. So you, got, you know you have those two downs to try to pick up whatever yardage you have left. So Brasley in the shotgun, looking to throw. Pump try fakes, to, try throws, to flip it out. and got knocked down, I think. Yeah, um, Cooper Avery again knocked that ball down. Looked like he was trying to flip it out here in the flats uh, to uh, Gibson there. So fourth down and 10 at the 19-yard line, we'll call it. 18-yard line, somewhere in there. Yeah. And the Hornets trying to turn Creekside away. This will be the, I think, the third time yeah. on this drive where it's been third or fourth down and long, mm -hmm. and Creekside's been able to convert so far. If it was me, I'd go back to that uh, that out route that they ran earlier. Yeah, that that comeback route was yeah. nice, right at the sticks, like you said. There, there in that double twins look again. And oh, hits him right in the hands in the middle of the end zone. And goes down yeah. incomplete. Yeah. What a yeah. pass. Yeah, we caught a break right there because, I mean, you can't throw that one any better. That was right on the money and just yeah. 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 Right there. Yeah. could not complete the pass. Break there for the Hornets. Now we've got 348 left on the uh, clock to try to do something with it. So Westfield will have the football. At the – My guess is you're going to see a heavy dose of poor fault right here. At about the 18-yard line with 3.48 yep. to go. First and 10. Hornets up 15 to nothing. They do have all three timeouts. Yep. And they're going to hand the ball off. And a great job yep. right there up the middle. Nowhere to go for Porter. It looks and like they had one more than we could block in there. I think that was 55. Uh, Jacavion Beatty. Um I on the tackle right there. Westfield maybe loses a half a yard yeah. on the play, so it'll bring up second down and 11. And the Hornets still not really in a big hurry. It's a little over three minutes to go. Yeah, you don't want to give them the ball back down here by any stretch of the imagination, but you want to try to grind out a couple first downs here and see what happens. 
Oh, uh, um, that nice. ball caught, yeah. I believe, yep. by Ryan Powers. Yep, that, nice job. <laughs> that, that was a not a very good throw by Kirkley, but no. and good the, job of Powers and, going and low the, and getting it. The umpire was right there in the way, uh, and I think he was more of a – distraction than, than anything else but Ryan did a good job of going down to the ground and securing that ball sometimes you need a good receiver or yeah a good receiver to make you look good yeah. as a quarterback well he's the way they talk about catch radius right and that ball thrown out on in the flat to Ryan Powers again they go back to the big tight end yeah. slash slash receiver slash, slash a little bit of everything right he linebacker whatever you want to call him he's all over the field yeah Shortstop in baseball. I hadn't seen him play basketball. I guess he's not. That's yeah, not his, yeah, he's, he gonna he's play actually going to play this year. First time uh, he's going to play. And I'll tell you what, judging this summer, he can do it. Well, good. <laughs> yeah. That'll be fun to watch then. So, Kirkley in the backfield gets the snap. Looking to throw. Throw short. Same, just a crossing same pattern. Route. Yep, same route. We that's threw to Blackman. Ryan. Yep, that's going to be Noah on that one. Picks up the first down. Picks up about yep. 12 on the play. And Westfield moving the chains. I don't know why they haven't stopped the clock yet. Not but. sure either. My question is, I guess the clock keeper is over there by the scoreboard somewhere. Yeah, this it's hard to. You know, they don't have a press box here. They and maybe should try to set them up like right in front of the on a platform something, or something. I think he may be up there on that uh, picnic table up there by the the speakers and the scoreboard. So under two minutes to play here in the first half. Kirkley fakes the handoff, dips it inside, gets upfield. He's inside the 25, 20, 15, and gets out of bounds inside the 15 for another first down for Westfield. Yeah, nice job right there. I don't I don't know whether the coaches have him reading that thing or not, but he did a really good job right there. I can tell you this. It looked like he read that yep. one. He rode the mesh a long time yeah, and really sold it. Yeah, he did a really good job right there. That's almost like the equivalent riding that mesh on that – Zone read is yeah. almost the equivalent of an option quarterback on the outside oh, yeah. drawing that defender into the last second when, to pitch. Yep. When when he commits, do something with it. Right. Do, do the opposite. <laughs> Jabo Shaw, when he played at Georgia Southern, was a master. He would wait until about a split second before he get hit in the face, and he pitched that ball. Kirkley going to take it to the outside. Great block by Cole Miller, and Kirkley will score. Wow, yep. what a block by Cole yep. Miller on the outside. Yep. And he's got a little bit extra yeah. to say about it, which, um, you know. All you got to do is give Kirkley a crease, and and he he can make everything else happen. So Westfield on top, 21 to nothing. Jackson Slade will be on for the point after touchdown. Brody McDaniel on the hold. Snap the kick, and it's good. So that makes it 22 to nothing with 121 left in the first half. So we'll take a quick break. Again, Westfield on top, 22 to nothing. We'll come back with the last minute 22 of the first half right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. At Westfield, we have different clubs that you can be in. You can choose between like a variety of clubs. There's like culinary art, there's key club, there's green team, there's try high Y. I'm currently involved in theatrical productions at Westfield. I'm involved with the school's one act and several plays like Fair Club, and try high Y, and key club, and I also dance. For Christmas, we decorated Christmas. And welcome back to Creekside Academy, Westfield on top, 22 to nothing. Slade set to kick off here, and just a little squibber, and Creekside finally falls on it on about their own 31-yard line, so they'll have possession there. The ball stayed on the ground for a long time, didn't it? That's a, we don't want a big return right here kind of kickoff. And if something crazy happens, maybe we get it back. So Creekside will come out. They're in the huddle right now with, again, a minute 15 to go.
first and ten at their own, we'll call it, 30, mm, 34 yard line. They're going to be in the double twins look again. They had a great opportunity last year of a score yep. and dropped that pass in the end zone. Brasley driving back to throw, going to throw the post pattern. Pretty pass, yep. but way too far. It's that was the that was the same exact play that they ran down there a while ago that should have scored. We did a little bit better job that time. Uh, who was that? That was Brody. I think Brody McDaniel there at safety to sniff that one out. So Brody came in and tried to get the receiver off his route there a little bit, and good job. So right now it will bring up second down and ten with a minute ten to go here. Yep. In the first quarter, like, excuse me, first half. Yep. Twenty-two to nothing. Your score. Second and ten. Brasley throws it out into the flat on just a little square out pattern for about four yards. Nice job right there. That's Bryant Greer again. Good job called tackling him, him inbounds too. Called his name uh, several times. We sent. Um, I think it was Dean Massey on a, in, a linebacker blitz right there. He almost reached. So Brasley in the shotgun under 35 seconds to go. Third down and eight, we'll call it. And he's going to throw it on a little arrow pattern inside. And Moon picks up the first down. Yeah. Creekside called timeout right there with 21.4 seconds to go here in the first half. We'll stay here. That's their last timeout, I believe. Yeah, I think it is too. So uh, just defend the goal line. That's what you got to do at this point, defend the goal line. So 21.4 for Creekside, and they're at about their own 44-yard uh, line. Nice little pass out of the backfield to Moon. He just kind of angled, yep. ran out, and then angled yeah. back across nice, the middle. Nice little play design right there. Um, and execution is just a matter of do you have time to, to do uh, – Want to give a quick shout out to uh, JJ Siegel helping us out last week with the broadcast in my absence. Him and Logan, actually, my dad was able to get Logan out to the to the field. And uh, Coach also like to thank Coach Farmer and Coach Fowler and congratulate them on another undefeated middle school season as well. Yeah, uh, our our kids finished up the season yesterday. Where were they playing? They, they were playing at Strong Rock. Strong Rock. Yesterday. I thought that's what it, where they were. Yeah, um, did a really good job this year and two years in a row without losing a middle school game. And that's not bad. The ball on the ground there. Bradley going to throw it out to the flats, deep flats, we'll call it, and going to get out of bounds yeah. with about 15 yeah. seconds to go. That's Pick, just a square yeah, out right there. Picked up another first down. So 15 right seconds to go at about the 45-yard line of the Hornets. Yeah, they're going to so say it's you, a little bit short. I'm, they are going to say first down. Yeah. So now it's going to be getting in that territory right here where you're potentially looking for a shot well, in the end zone. Well, and if you're if you're Westfield, just keep them in bounds. Yeah, cause that's a screen pass right there. And Moon yeah. sheds off a defender. And, and we kept him in bounds. Logan. Logan, follow the play. And we kept we kept him in bounds right there. The clock will stop temporarily for the first down, but then the clock is going to wind uh, once the chains are set, and it's going to be tough. You know, they'll get one more play off, and they they spike the ball with, with well the clock. The clock move. never moved. Well, it's not a timeout. They, they didn't have yeah. one left. I don't think. Clock sh should have moved some. Now, obviously, they were able to get the playoff and um, so that'll kill be the clock. second so, down and ten. So you going you got one play no matter what, but the clock should have moved somewhat right there. Yeah. 
clock should have moved just a little bit. Somebody's yelling that yeah, over there. They didn't have a timeout. Yeah, that was Coach Kinsler. So, in the shotgun yet again, this will more than likely yep. be the last play unless it's a defensive penalty. And Brasley going to throw it to the end zone and picked off by – I did not – was yeah. that Powers? Uh, I couldn't tell. That is actually – looks like Brody McDaniel. Okay, right Brody there. McDaniel uh, goes up and picks off the pass to end the half. Yep. Westfield will head to the half – with a 22 to nothing halftime lead and also we'll get the football yep. coming back out of halftime. Yep. So that is huge for the Hornets. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back probably with about four minutes to go in the halftime and wrap up the first half and look forward to the second. You're watching Hornet football right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. What I like about Westfield is uh, just the, uh, the family atmosphere that we have here. Uh, the teachers are just great, the coaches are great. Even though I was not here when I started school, I came in and it was like everyone acted like I had been here the whole time. It's an environment where everyone just accepts you and wants to get to know you like they would have known you like all of their friends that have been here since the beginning of grade school. I just like the atmosphere that you have here. Everybody, they truly care about you. Everyone in my grade, we're so close together. Um, I think of them as my brothers and sisters almost because they know me so well and I know them so well. I think the most important thing that happened to me um, when I spent my time in Westville is that I actually become a Christian and then um, I actually find my faith. And, um, and, and, I, and I think Westville gave me such a great Christian environment that I can actually have the freedom to express my faith to. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My mother and grandmother are cancer survivors, so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now, and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. I have four grandparents who are still living, and I realized after some research that this was the best way I could protect them and the community at large. As a physician, I feel it's important to get vaccinated for the masses to prevent uh, overcrowding of our ICUs. I got the vaccine to protect myself and also to protect my mother. I would ask people when you consider getting vaccinated for the COVID-19 virus, not only consider your own risk stratification, but also your role in the community. Westfield is a challenging environment. It's a Christian school, it's a Christian environment. And it provides students with great opportunities. Definitely all the teachers, they prepare you for college, they help you with some like problems that they'll give you like some real life experiences that will help you with college. Every teacher that I have in any of my classes is always telling us that they're here after school. They're always willing to answer any questions we might have. What Westfield is a harder school, but it challenges you and it gets you ready for college. And I think Westville gave me such a great Christian environment that I can actually have the freedom to express my faith. Westville provides a lot of great opportunities for students to learn and for students to grow and for students to learn more about themselves.
At Westfield, we have different clubs that you can be in. You can choose between like a variety of clubs. There's like culinary art, there's key club, there's green team, there's try high Y. I'm currently involved in theatrical productions at Westfield. I'm involved with the school's one act and several plays like Fair Club and Chahawa and Key Club and I also dance. For Christmas we decorated Christmas trees and we decorated door decorations for the nursing homes here in Perry. And we have also, I've gone and cleaned up some of the parks around um, Perry. Community service is definitely valued at Westfield. I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. I play football, baseball, basketball, and I run track. I love the contact sport. I love the ability to get my, my feelings and aggression out throughout the hard day or hard week out at practice. I was a part of the, uh, the Westfield wrestling team when I was a freshman, and that's also the year when I played soccer. So it was been fun, and um, I'm going to play soccer again in my senior year, and uh, hopefully I will probably be the captain of the soccer team. I enjoy just spending time with my teammates and uh, getting to just rep the green and gold like everyone else has in the past. On Thursdays, uh, we get to uh, go out and um, with the football team and we get uh, our chaplain out there and uh, he does a great job and I think on a Thursday that's great to do because it's a uh, day before the game and you get to think about God and, and just choices in life and that's kind of what the game of football is like. Together. Athletic. Friendships. Confidence. Challenging. Success. Rewarding. Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My mother and grandmother are cancer survivors so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. I have four grandparents who are still living, and I realized after some research that this was the best way I could protect them and the community at large. As a physician, I feel it's important to get vaccinated for the masses to prevent uh, overcrowding of our ICUs. I got the vaccine to protect myself and also to protect my mother. I would ask people when you consider getting vaccinated for the COVID-19 virus, not only consider your own risk stratification, but also your role in the community.
Westfield is a challenging environment. It's a Christian school, it's a Christian environment. And it provides students with great opportunities. Definitely all the teachers, they prepare you for college, they help you with some like problems that they'll give you like some real life experiences that will help you with college. Every teacher that I have in any of my classes is always telling us that they're here after school. They're always willing to answer any questions we might have. Westfield is a harder school, but it challenges you and it gets you ready for college. And I think Westfield gave me such a great Christian environment that I can actually have the freedom to express my faith. Westfield provides a lot of great opportunities for students to learn and for students to grow and for students to learn more about themselves. At Westfield, we have different clubs that you can be in. You can choose between like a variety of clubs. There's like culinary art, there's key club, there's green team, there's try high Y. I'm currently involved in theatrical productions at Westfield. I'm involved with the school's one act and several plays at Fair Club and try high Y and key club, and I also dance. For Christmas, we decorated Christmas trees and we decorated door decorations for the nursing homes here in Perry. And we have also, I've gone and cleaned up some of the parks around um, Perry. Community service is definitely valued at Westfield. I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. I play football, baseball, basketball, and I run track. I love the contact sport. I love the ability to get my my feelings and aggression out throughout the hard day or hard week out at practice. I was a part of the, uh, the Westfield wrestling team when I was a freshman, and that's also the year when I played soccer. So it was been fun, and um, I'm going to play soccer again in my senior year, and uh, hopefully I will probably be the captain of the soccer team. I enjoy just spending time with my teammates and uh, getting to just rep the green and gold like everyone else has in the past. On Thursdays, uh, we get to uh, go out and um, with the football team and we get a, our chaplain out there and uh, he does a great job and I think on a Thursday that's great to do because it's a day for the game and you get to think about God and, and just choices in life and that's kind of what the game of football is like. Together. Athletic. Friendships. Confidence. Challenging. Success. Rewarding. Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. 
For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My mother and grandmother are cancer survivors, so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. Westfield is a challenging environment. It's a Christian school, it's a Christian environment. And it provides students with great opportunities. Definitely all the teachers, they prepare you for college, they help you with some like problems that they'll give you like some real life experiences that will help you with college. Every teacher that I have in any of my classes is always telling us that they're here after school. They're always willing to answer any questions we might have. What Westfield is a harder school, but it challenges you and it gets you ready for college. And I think Westfield gave me such a great Christian environment that I can actually have the freedom to express my faith. Westfield provides a lot of great opportunities for students to learn and for students to grow and for students to learn more about themselves. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I have four grandparents who are still living, and I realized after some research that this was the best way I could protect them and the community at large. As a physician, I feel it's important to get vaccinated for the masses to prevent uh, overcrowding of our ICUs. I got the vaccine to protect myself and also to protect my mother. I would ask people when you consider getting vaccinated for the COVID-19 virus, not only consider your own risk stratification, but also your role in the community. At Westfield, we have different clubs that you can be in. You can choose between like a variety of clubs. There's like culinary arts, there's key club, there's green team, there's try high Y. I'm currently involved in theatrical productions at Westfield. I'm involved with the school's one act and several plays like Clear Club, and try high Y, and key club, and I also dance. For Christmas, we decorated Christmas trees and we decorated door decorations for the nursing homes here in Perry. And we have also, I've gone and cleaned up some of the parks around um, Perry. Community service is definitely valued at Westfield.
The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Welcome back here to McDonough, Georgia. We're on the campus of Creekside Christian Academy. Westfield leads at halftime 22 to nothing. I'm Brett Taylor. Again, alongside me is Coach Chip Champion. And Coach, pretty successful first half for the Hornets. Did have a few uh, issues there on the first couple of drives, but we're able to really get things going and they have a 22 to nothing lead here at halftime. What do you think uh, yeah. they need to do coming out here? It doesn't feel like a 22 22- point lead though does it not I mean, really I mean it feels like it ought to be maybe two touchdowns uh at the most because Creekside has done some some pretty good things I thought you know getting in that eye they pounded the ball had a little success and then you know been fairly impressed with the quarterback now he throws a pretty decent ball you know honestly they should have a touchdown on the board had they not dropped that ball um right there uh, Right there, I guess, in the closing minutes of the uh, second quarter, um, I think we played pretty well, especially offensively. We've, uh, you know, we've done about what we wanted to do. Uh, just haven't had a whole lot of possession yeah, yeah, in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, give them credit. They, they just ate a bunch of clock up. I mean, I think we had maybe, what, two minutes of possession in the second quarter, something like that. It seemed like they had the ball for the entire second quarter. And it's tough to tough to score when you don't have the ball. Now the good thing right. is we get the first possession here of the second half and need to go do something with it. You know, and you know, I'm sure the coaches are thinking, hey, let's let's do what we're supposed to do. Let's get this thing th- a thirty point um lead <laughs> and uh, and then um let's get this thing to a running clock so we we can get back to the house and worry about next week. Yeah, no injuries right now. Try to extend that lead and get uh, like you said, get on that bus headed back yeah, to I mean, Towson well, County. You know, this group, and I was talking to the coaches earlier this week, and I see what they're talking about. You know, looking at these guys on film, they're scary. Cause right. they got athletes big everywhere. Guys too. I mean, they got big guys on the line, and they got athletes. You know, they're they a scary-looking bunch. So you don't want to give them any any glimmer that that something good can happen for them. So you need to come out here in the, in the, um, in the quarter and do what you got to do and be done with it and – uh, and and move on. So, th- I I would say that this possession is a big one for us right here. Do what we got to do. If nothing else, flip the field position a little bit, and uh, you know, try to get some points on the board and get this thing at a point where you're in that running clock situation. Yeah, I mean that's the thing right here. You know that you can probably just uh, I think out execute right now just from a pure numbers perspective. Westfield has an advantage, but. Like you said, you you don't want to come out here, not go down and score, give the football back to Creekside, and then they happen to put a good drive, yeah. another drive together, or, which they've or, done, or bust one, that's and then they get right about. back in the yeah. game, and that's I mean, the thing. You know, we've done. You just re- kind of want to grind them yeah, down. Yeah, we've done a really good job of keeping everything in front of us, other than that one one pass play that they dropped. Right. Uh, you know, we've done a pretty good job of that, but. Um, you know, you just got to keep them hemmed up because the scary thing is they're one play away from getting right back in the ball game. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, and it looks like we're about to get things started here. Again, I think, like you said, this is, uh, you know, and like it is a lot of times in games, especially games like this, this first drive of the second half is really probably going to set the tone well, for how, how things finish here for the Hornets. Yeah, I mean, even though they had a possession right there at the end of the uh, half, it's almost a two-for-one kind of thing. Right. So, um one thing we have noticed is that Hunter Kirkley started to get going there in the second quarter um, and had a big run to kind of yeah. cap off that last with his drive. Wheels. Yeah, with his wheels. Yeah, his legs have been very dynamic so far in this contest, and Porter Falk had it going early. It seemed like Creekside really focused in on him, and then Hunter Kirkley got going. I wonder if you might see a little bit more 24 here in the third. I would think you probably would, um, you know. You you grind it. You run some clock and and move the football. I think between, I think the ball stays with Kirkley. I think it stays with um, 
Porter, and you know we we did a pretty good job of mixing, you know, getting um, Noah some touches and Ryan some touches, and they they're your playmakers, right? So Westfield will get the football coming out of the half. Uh, we're about to start. Looks like Brasley will be there, the kickoff man for Creekside. Yep. Donovan Brasley. I wouldn't be shocked if you didn't get an onside kick of some kind right here. So you just got to be aware yep. if you're that front line of Westfield. We saw it a couple weeks ago yep. where Westfield just kind of I think it was against Terrell, really uh, drove a ball to that front line and bounced gotta, right off and picked it up. So Got to make it go over your head. And they're going to kind of pooch, pooch yep. side pooch here. Getting up field, nice catch, and it's picking Bishop. up more yardage. Yep. Is that Bishop Smallwood? Yep, that's Bishop. So Bishop with a good kick return here. Well, it pop up right there and got behind. He actually tried to hide behind some of his blockers right there and was able to squirt out and gain about 10 yards on that. So 11.49 to go here in the third quarter. Westfield will start the second half drive from their own 49-yard line maybe? No, excuse me. Yeah, from their own 46-yard yeah. line. Seemed like we played on that other end of the field almost the whole first half. Yeah, and we haven't seen a whole lot except that one yep. touchdown drive from, yep. from Westfield. So first and ten, Kirkley, three by one look. Going to throw across the middle to Powers. Hits it, and he's inside. He may go. He's inside the 10-5, and touchdown yep. Hornets. One play, set uh, six points, and the Hornets go up 28 to nothing. Yep, wow. Made, made that look easy. Clock's sure running. Right, yeah, finally, finally stopped. I don't know why that's such a pet peeve of mine, but well, <coughs> well, I'm I'm sure where he's sitting, it's hard for him to tell whether it's running or not. <laughs> right. So it looks like Jackson Slade's going to be in for the extra point right here. I think it's Brody McDaniel again on the hold. Not sure who that is snapping the ball for. <laughs> So Westfield a chance to go up 29 nothing here. So Brody. Good kick or good snap. Yeah. Good kick. And Great job of getting it down. PAT is good. So Westfield up 29 to nothing. We'll take a quick break, come back with a kickoff right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. And we're set here for kickoff. Jackson Slade will set things up for the Hornets after the, what was that, 54-yard touchdown reception yep. from Kirkley to Powers. Really quick. And less than 30 seconds off the clock, and the Westfield Hornets extend their lead yeah, to 29 was, to nothing. It was really about 10 seconds off the clock. but. <laughs> and we'll... Jackson will finally get set and takes his little skip step and kicks the ball. Ball taken at about the 18-yard line uh -oh. and getting upfield. Uh -oh. Breaks loose, and who is that, number seven? Uh, eight. Number eight, Joshua Gibson. Yep. He's been all over the field tonight. He, he is. Was, he's he, a good-looking athlete. He was one guy away from that thing going to the house. Yeah, he's a, he's a scary guy. Back there, he can really move, and he's got some elusiveness in the open field. So Westfield finally able to get him on the ground at about the 40, uh, 44 yard line or so. so. Creekside has great field position, but they trail 29 to nothing. The Hornets have dominated so far. That Creekside's been able to put together a few drives the last couple of possessions. We'll see what they can do here. Brasley in the shotgun, going to throw out here a little bit of a screen, actually. We Ball's ball. on the ground. Westfield may have it. Hornets recover. Is that, that's um, Bryant Greer again. We've called his name a ton tonight. Yeah, nice little screen pass right there. And he had some yardage, and I'm not sure who came up and made the hit. But 
we were able to recover that ball. Yeah, I guess he just kind of popped him. And yep. Ball came out. Westfield hopped on it. So first down and 10 from the 49-yard line of the Hornets. See what we do right here. My guess is oh, we're going to throw the ball again. Looking to throw, going to throw wide across open, the Blackman. crossing pattern. Noah Blackman is wide open, going to get upfield inside the 20 and cuts across, gets knocked down at about the uh, five. Or, is it's that inside the well, 10? Inside yeah, the 10, yeah, I inside, think. Yeah, it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be. So right first about, and goal right after the, the 10, long yeah. pickup. Westfield knocking on the door yet again after the turnover. And, again, this is exactly what you wanted if you're the Hornets. Come oh, out, yeah. do, try to dominate the third quarter and extend that lead, yep. and that's what they've done so far. They're up 29 to nothing with less than a minute and a half gone off the clock here in the third. Dropping back to pass, going to throw out and, and incomplete. incomplete. Yep. Yep. Brody tried to make a, a diving effort there, but probably one of the hardest passes yeah. to connect on. You know he's wide open out yep. there, but it's a it's. I thought there for a second that he had it, but I I guess that's it, a long yeah. pass out there in the deep flats, if you will. Ten thirty to go here. Going to hand it off. On the jet sweep in Westfield, going to score. Touchdown, Hornets. But that was Noah Blackman on the carry. So Noah takes the – Noah Blackman takes the handoff in for six. 10-21 to go here. Third quarter, Westfield now on top, 35 to nothing. Execution for Westfield has been great so far here in the second half. Yeah. And it'll be Slade, Slade on yep. again for the extra point. So Jackson Slade kicks it up, and good. it's good. Yep. So we'll stay here. Westfield on top, 36 to nothing. We'd like to thank our sponsors really quick. Again, Houston Healthcare, the ABE Group. We'd also like to thank Sonova Securities, the Westfield Booster Club, the Westfield School, and Sonic for help making these broadcasts possible. Yeah, and I'd also like to thank all of our Booster Club sponsors. Absolutely. Uh, through, you know, that so generously give to our athletic programs, and we couldn't do the things that we do without them. And I, I know our coaches and uh, our student athletes really appreciate all their generosity throughout the year um you know i tell people all the time we never go without and and that's right. an awesome thing well that was one thing i was thinking of after the game probably going to have some sort of nourishment for the guys i'm assuming that's yep. probably something the booster club helps the bo yep the booster helps club to fund we, and we do pre-game and post-game meals for the guys you know we do for the other teams i know the softball team now sort of has a tradition of uh, going out to eat the night before the state championship series, uh, you know, and I don't know that we even mentioned it, but our girls won ga the first game of the championship series three to nothing yesterday against Tift area, and will play again tomorrow at one. Got to win one or two games to win a fifth state championship. And I'm not trying to jinx anything. But don't it. say it. <laughs> All right, I yeah. will then. We just got to win one out of two games. I was tomorrow. just going to say that it seems like it's going to be a tall task for anybody to beat Sydney. Well, twice. She's, she's been really good. She, I mean, she's been really good. And, you know, honestly, you know, Lauren Davidson, our freshman, yeah, has, we been, talked about that. has been really good. We were talking about it during halftime. She's been lights out this year, too. So uh, our girls have done a really good job this year. One loss on the season. And what 27, 28 games now. So uh, you know our, our coaches have done a really good job. Uh, I think we may have an injury yeah. on the play. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. looks like it may be a hornet down. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Again, we talked about that not wanting to get any injuries. Hopefully, yeah. he's okay. I think that's is that Bishop Smallwood. 
who came up with the – was that – did he come up with – no, he's the one who caught the kick return, I think. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, second and six. But, yeah, the, the ladies play tomorrow again. Kind of a different uh, – Approach this year where you play on the Thursday. Yeah, it's been this way for a couple of years now. Has it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that they've been playing at the at Southern Pines yeah. before. Uh, game one, all, all classification game one were were yesterday, uh, and then all of them, games two and three will be tomorrow. You skip Friday because of football, obviously. Right, uh, makes sense. You know that's a that's a huge deal. So. Great job of the outside line. Is that a Greer yeah, boy? No, that's okay. Dean Massey actually. Dean Massey, yep. yes, it is. Great play right there, having a nice nose for the football. Good, good assignment football right there. Third and six. Again, we talked earlier about trying to retrace your steps as a defensive line. You know that that that's you can kind of feel when it's too easy getting yeah. through there. Oh yeah. And uh, Dean Massey does a good job navigating the big fellows from Creekside to find the back. Yeah. Out of the backfield. Man, with Collenbach being out, he Dean actually moves the linebacker, uh, and he's done a pretty good job there for us. But and I actually our cross country season's widening down a little bit. We had a couple of girls place really high at the region this that, week. That ball picked off and Westville gonna take it the distance. That's wow, Trey Hardy. That's, that's Hardy on yeah. the interception. Looked like we had a little bit of a uh, crossing pattern mix up there in the middle. Number eight, uh, Joshua Gibson got knocked down, and then Trey Hardy able to pick off the pass and take it the distance. So things are really going good for Westville when you score when you don't have the football. Yeah. 42 oh, yeah. to nothing your score now with 8.38 to go here in the third quarter. And Slade on again, he may need to ice his leg before tonight's out. Yep. Of course, as cool as it is, he may not have to worry about it. Well, if y'all – so just for – Anybody who's been under a rock for the last half decade, the Hornet, <laughs> yeah, the Hornet girls like... are going for their fifth in a row tomorrow. With either game, a, vi a victory in either game would get get that job yep. done. Uh, if that happens, I'm expecting a ho a green hoodie with the word Cinco over it and just a. A Westfield W in well, the middle. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I leave, <laughs> Don't want to uh, count your chickens yeah, before they have. Yeah, yeah, I've seen too many crazy things happen over the years. And so. softball has some crazy stuff happening yeah. in it too. Well, I mean, you you feel really good. You know, you want to always get game one. That's to me is always the big one in a three game series. Right. Get that one. That at least gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, but you you know you want to go ahead and take care of business tomorrow. Get it done. Um, and en enjoy the fruits of the season. Well, you've, I mean, I'm telling you. You, you've had such uh, big bats that graduated last year from that team, but I wonder how much different really the offensive numbers for the team looks like they're this different. year. They're, I mean, they're, there's no doubt they're different, but I think our defense uh, this year is actually better. Uh, I mean, our hitting has not been, but we, we've done enough. And, of course, you said it a while ago when you got Sydney out there, yeah. Uh, you feel you feel pretty good about things, right. and you know you know we've won some tight ball games that, quite honestly, we had didn't last couple of years we didn't play many tight ball games. Well, um, one thing I was going to say, it seems like every time I've tuned in on the Game Changer app, or I keep my tabs on them, it seems like they've been scoring a good amount of runs. But well, you're right, they haven't really had those big uh, breakout no, games, if you will, no, with huge I mean, runs. We've, but we won a bunch of games. You know, eight to nothing or right. something like that, and you know, quite honestly, you know, we've had a few games where we've struggled a little bit with the bats. You right. know, we beat a Bethlehem Christian team who, quite frankly, was not very good, but we struggled with them and beat them two to one on a walk off. Right. But then in game two, we turned around and beat them fifteen to nothing. So you know, I mean, but part of that was a growing up process for you know we've got one senior and one junior on the team, right? And the rest are freshmen and sophomores that quite honestly had not played a lot until this year at the varsity level. So right. you know they had they had a lot of maturation to do during the season, and they've done a really good job of it. And I think we're probably playing some of our best softball at just the right time.
And that's good. I mean, you, those youngsters have uh, obviously had a lot of success at the lower level. Um, well, and, and quite honestly, there's just a lot of talent there. Th- yeah, but I was about to say, it just, you know, yeah, that, that maturity starts to shine out because you know the talent's there yeah. once they oh, yeah. gain that experience. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Good pass out there but from Brasley. Picks up about six on the play. That'll bring up third down and five. But that would be a great finish to uh, – just uh, another incredible year in softball for the Hornets. Only one loss so far this season. It'd be uh, just an awesome thing for them to be able to finish out uh, with a game two victory and be. I think it would be twenty six and one or twenty five and one, some whatever it is, somewhere in there. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> any way you slice it, it would be ridiculously good. Yeah. Oh yeah. No doubt. Going to hand the ball off to Moon. Moon gets the outside, tries to cut it back. Nowhere to go. Westfield stacks him up there, loses yeah. probably a yard on the play. And the Hornets, again, you use that word, they're swarming on that play. Yeah, that was John McPherson uh, in on the tackle, I think, right there. Uh, and uh, who's that? Neil O'Brien also on the tackle. So we got some young, some starting to rotate some, some young guys in there some. So the Hornets – Looking like they're going to move to 6-1 and one on the season. They've got two regular season games remaining. I have not really looked at the max preps well, rankings. The, the latest rankings, I actually looked at them for the first time all season this week, uh, and we they have us ranked third in, in AAA behind John Millage and Pinewood, both two really good football teams. Looking to throw the ball deep and connects with him. Yep. Good tackle on the play, but a nice pass out to, I believe that is number eight. Number um, eight again, Gibson. Yep. A little out and up, I think. Uh, I think with the, the fumbled snap back there, uh, it sort of threw their timing off, and he just released up the field. Brody, I think it was Brody McDaniel that came over and, and knocked him out of bounds there. Gibson does a good job right there coming up with the reception after the big hit. As you said, Brasley kind of had the ball squirt back there to him, and he had to try to pick that up off the ground and then get it out of there before he got hit. He's looking to throw out to the flats and juggle ball I caught he, yeah. somehow yeah. and picks up about eight on the play. Yeah, I actually thought he dropped the ball, but I, he, he fumbled it and, and sort of got him a running start to, <laughs> to grab it and – and pick up a nice eight-yard gain there. Yeah, second and two, we'll call it. Under four to go here in the third quarter. Hornets on top, 43 to nothing. I saw some of the pictures, I think. I don't know if it was on Facebook or Twitter of the good, nice send-off that school had for Lady Hornets before yep. they headed over to Dublin Thursday. I'm assuming we'll probably have a pretty big Hornet crowd I over there think, tomorrow. I would think so. Um Pass across the middle, caught, and he's going to walk into the end yeah. zone. That's number seven. That's the same exact play they ran earlier in the first half. I did not pick up a name on who yeah, that was. Yeah. I was trying to listen for him because we do not have him on the roster, but a nice pass from Brasley right there, and it's now 43-6. to 3-10 to go here. For some reason, the clock is well, still moving, but I, like I don't know. It looks like we're probably at a running clock point. Uh, I would think that the coaches have agreed to do so. So, Creekside. Looks like they're going to go for two here. They're going to go for two, down 43-6. to six. Going to roll to his left, looking to throw. Throws back across the middle, and that ball is caught. Yep. Juggled and caught. I wondered if he was looked like he was close to the back of the end zone there, but it's pretty good distance from here. So a nice catch right there for Creekside again. I think that was number seven, and I do not have his yeah, they, his no, his name they, unfortunately. The quarterback uh, has been pretty impressive. I mean, he he's got a good little arm and throws the ball pretty well. Big thing is they just haven't been able to stop us. 
Yeah, that and just, you know, as you mentioned it, they put together some drives in the first half, but you really start to see on defense the numbers game has really yeah. hurt them because mm-hmm. uh, they have not been able to to keep up consistent play on defense, and Westfield has just kind of scored whenever they wanted. So the Hornets will come out for the kickoff here. Braz, Brasley will be doing the will be doing the kicking, and that ball kicked out of bounds. Yep. So that'll be a flag. The legal procedure on the Cougars. And I think they'll place that at the spot yeah, yeah. Of, well, of where it went out if it's not past the what 35, 40 yeah. yard line, something. I, think, I I can't remember the difference between. I know. I think it's actually the is it the forty. So we're under a minute here in the third quarter. Be at the, I think it's going to be at the. I guess where it went out of bounds. Yeah. It's at the I don't know, it's at the thirty five, so I yeah. guess they placed it there. Maybe it went past the thirty five. I can't tell from here. Yeah. So Westfield comes out with four wide look here in the shotgun. Kirkley takes a snap, looking to throw, gonna throw out to Powers. Powers gets upfield. He's gonna break a couple of tackles, gets past another couple of defenders. He's on his feet, still gets a great block right there. And Porter Fox springs him for the touchdown. Yep. Again, that was pretty easy. Um, I hear we've got a watch party going on tonight. Uh, the for us? No, yes, for us. I mean, I don't know how that happens. I know uh, how we can stop I, I, them from doing I, that. I, yeah, we'll, we'll put both of us on yeah, camera and so. let them well, stare at our face for a little bit, and then they'll turn that just, off quickly. We just talk. <laughs> uh, from what I understand. Uh, Cole Miller's grandparents. Oh, are, that's awesome! Are having a watch party yep. and, and and getting entertained by us tonight. Hey, <laughs> if you want mind-numbingly funny stuff, <laughs> they, we can provide. Might, that. They might be asleep by now, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> so on for the kick will be number fourteen, Jackson Slade. Westfield scores forty-nine to eight. Your score, Slade's kick is up and it is good. And the Hornets tack on an extra point. It's 50 to 8. Yeah, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter yeah. right there. So so we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with the rest of the ball game. Westfield leads 50 to 9. You're watching Hornet football right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My mother and grandmother are cancer survivors so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. I chose to get the vaccine because I did not want to risk getting sick myself and taking that virus home to my family or to my elderly grandparents. My mother and grandmother are cancer survivors, so I just want to make sure that I'm as safe as possible. I did it for my family to keep them safe and to keep me safe. There is a choice now, and I chose to make that choice for my friends and my family. And welcome back to Creekside Christian Academy. Westfield leads I believe that should say 50 to, mm-hmm. not to 8. Yep. I think they missed the extra point there, but we have it on our scoreboard at 50 to 8. This start of the fourth quarter, Jackson Slade back to kick. He kicks the ball deep inside the 20-yard line, fielded at about the 16-yard line, getting up field, and a great tackle right there. Who is that? That's Ryan Powers. Oh, man, he Ryan, is having Ryan, a night. Yep, Ryan's had a really good night too. He's had a couple touchdowns already, and – Big catches, yeah, some good had, plays on defense. He's, he's probably approaching 10 tackles on the night as well. He's had a really good night. A couple good punt and returns. He, his, his night may be close to done. Looks like we got you know several young guys in there now. Yeah, I see some whiter uniforms. Yep. yep. Although Billy Jack's a starter and his yeah, is pretty I white, but still, see, still see you know, Brady Greer in there. He's out on the um, outside, yeah. so you expect to see those DBs yeah. to have a little bit yeah. wider jerseys. 
And I see Brooks Barber in there now. John McPherson's been in a little bit, and I'm sure we'll start getting some some more rotating in. For Brasley dropping back, going to throw it to the outside ball, knocked away. Yep. I think that was was Bishop, that Bishop yeah, Smallwood Bishop did a really good so, job. So nice job of knocking that away. Brasley tries to get it over the arms of Smallwood. Also in coverage out there was Billy Jack Gregory doing a good job. Well, you got William Smith out there at a cornerback. I think Bradley is number seven's last name, maybe. I think I might have picked that up just there on that. It's taken us the whole game to figure out who number seven was. but yeah. Well, hey, that's okay. He's he's had a he's had a good night, that's for sure. So again in the shotgun, Brasley gets the ball across the middle. Again, yep. seems like the middle of the field yep. has been very good for Creekside. Yep. Coach Kinsler not happy yep. about that. A fullback right there. He's had a good night too. So uh, that's Moon. That's Moon. Yeah. yeah, that's a good that's a good looking football player right there now. So third down and two. And, again, we saw Creekside kind of do this in the first half. They struggled for a couple drives yep. and then started stringing some things together. And you you have to wonder if maybe they could have gotten a couple early drives and stuck with the run game a little bit yeah. longer. Could they have, have really kept the score closer and really grinded the clock down? Well, you know, they really did. And then all of a sudden here in the second half, it's just been an onslaught of things. Uh, you somehow know, that went through yeah, Smallwood's it hands. Went through about four different right, hands. and then Bradley's hands, I think. Yeah, and then Brody McDaniel's hands. I'm not sure how that one came all the way through there. So it's going to be fourth and two. I would assume that. What do you have to lose right here? Yeah. Um, Under nine minutes to play. It's been a running clock since yeah. about the second time, second score yeah. for Westfield in the in the half. So. It was a what a twenty-two to nothing score yep. at halftime. Mm -hmm. And then, then we had two really quick scores, and then the pick six, and all of a sudden it got away from Creekside really right. quick. Yeah, the two turnovers really uh, exacerbated or quickened the scoring yep. for Westfield. Brasley looking to throw the ball, knocked away. That's Brooks number Barber. four. Brooks Barber. Brooks knocked Barber that, knocked that ball down. And. Yep. Talk about an athletic play right there. Yep. I gotta have a. When are we gonna get a Charlie Briscoe sighting? I don't think Charlie. I think Charlie probably is not playing tonight. I know he rolled his ankle yesterday. And uh, uh, I just want to say his name. Game. He's got yeah. a great name. Well, I imagine if you come do some basketball games this year, you'll definitely call well, his good. name. Oh, so. I'll be doing some basketball games. I wouldn't admit, I'm, hey, I'm the leader of the Chip Champion, the Coach Chip Champion uh, <laughs> fan club. <laughs> the, the, the Chip Champion Lynch mob? Nah. <laughs> who's going to be, who's going to be your assistant coach? Coach um, Fowler? White Young. White Young. Oh, yeah. yeah. White's going to come help us cool. out. Cool. That's coach, awesome. Coach Fowler will go back to, girls. to the girls. Um, you know, he, he, you know, me and him last year had to. You know, I had to do a cameo role on mm. the, with the varsity boys last year when yeah. when uh, Coach, Coach Jones, Jones got uh, got COVID. So uh, we hope we don't have to do that. we don't have to repeat that again. That was is, Nick Free. Is that Nicholas the, Free? Yeah, that was Nick Free on the carry right there. And I think you you see a bunch of new faces in there on the offense. You got Connor Fitzpatrick in at quarterback, and a um, bunch of. It's like our young line. So Connor's going to take the pass, or excuse me, the snap, and gets it out. So William Smith on the on the catch. William Smith receives the pass. The lefty Connor yep. Fitzpatrick throwing a ball out there. Nice tight spiral. It like it ended up losing a yard on the play. I can't wait to see him hit a little bit of a growth spurt because he's a. Pretty good looking athlete. Who's that? Connor. Connor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. He's got a uh, nice little passing uh, motion, throwing motion there. And there is a flag on the play. That may be an illegal procedure on Westfield, yeah, and we, it is. Uh -huh. 
And yep. that's what we call a Ferris wheel legal, legal yep. procedure from the White Hat. Yep. <laughs> that thing yeah. was so. <laughs> well, he doesn't know where to. He where to turn? To point because he's having to look at the, I guess the press box or whatever they call it down there at the school board end. So. Yeah, it's a disorienting uh, yeah. <laughs> location yeah, to say yeah. the least. But you know, I mean, some of these schools that haven't had football for very yep. long or whatnot, what this is kind do. of the build. Yep. I mean, we've seen it in multiple schools we've been to where. Yep few years down the road they may have different uh parts of the facility yep. and connor gets up field yep. nice carrier there by connor and if you don't if you don't have the penalty right there you probably get that first down right so, so it's, it's be fourth, fourth and yeah. what four we'll call it yeah fourth and three somewhere in there looks like we're going to go for it but this is a neat little setting it'll be interesting to see how this kind of grows in yep. the future Maybe the next time we we get to come back here and see, yep, see what they do with it. But they do have a neat little setup here, I think. Connor gonna fake it to the outside, and he's gonna be sacked on the play. That's a big yeah. fellow right there, number fifty-five, Jakevion Beatty. Yep. So just under five minutes ago, your score fifty to eight is what I have. It's forty-nine in the in the. Stadium, I think they may be off a point yeah. there. Uh, at this point, what difference does it make? It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. regardless, it's four minutes and ten seconds to go, and now Creekside will have possession yep. back. If nothing else, Westfield gets a victory here tonight, and I get back broadcasting, and that's the way everything should be there you go. oriented in the world. <laughs> Dropping back, Brasley looking to throw across the middle. And again, and that ball's popped up and, and recaught. Caught, yeah. And looks like number 43 for Westfield made the tackle. And that is John McPherson. And it looks like Gibson may be hurt. He got crunched yeah. by McPherson. And it was kind of one of those going yeah, back against he, the yeah. grain. Collision. Gibson's yeah. running the opposite direction, and McPherson collides into him. Hopefully, he, uh, hopefully he's able to get up after – Getting crunched down a little bit. We'll go through and thank our sponsors one more time. And uh, during this injury timeout, brought to you by House and Healthcare, and hopefully uh, Gibson is okay. We'd also like to thank the ABE Group, Sonova Securities, and the Westville Booster Club. And as Coach Champion mentioned earlier, just all of our Booster Club members, all the sponsors that provide, uh, you know, like we talked about the the post game and pre game meals for uh, for football and then some of the other sports, uh, just the financial yeah. ability well, to do things for the the guys here. It's it's much easier to do things when when you have the financial backing and such good support that we we do from all of our folks and right. you know I mean not only finances but the things that people do for us. I mean absolutely you know, we've got a bunch of very active parents and do really good things for us you know i do want to thank miss gina smallwood who sort of coordinates everything for us with football with team meals and all that stuff um she's been a godsend for us because otherwise us guys probably wouldn't do as good of a job handling it as she does might get a cheeseburger or something <laughs> <laughs> so we'd like to thank the westfield school and then also sonic uh, drive in, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it's always uh, it it really just shows how much people care. So that's yep. that's always a good thing and good intercept. Yep. Oh, Billy Jack jumps the route and no. just drops yep. the pass. Yep, Is really it intended good. for number ten, Malcolm Cortland. Yeah, really good job right there of anticipating. Just didn't complete the catch. I tell you what, Billy Jack. That's about the second time he's been pretty close to yep. an interception. But take a pass breakup as a coach. I mean, oh, yeah. no. nothing wrong with that. Under uh, 2.45 to go here in the game, Westfield again leads. And they will again go to 6-1 and one on the season. Brasley in the shotgun, going to drop back, looking to throw across the middle, gets it out. I think that's Bradley. He's tackled down uh, right Neil, at the line of scrimmage. Neil O'Brien on the tackle. Dante Excuse me, Dante Ernest yeah. is his name. I don't know why I thought it's. Oh, he's number two on our roster. Oh. 
two so seven Dante plus Ernest, nine. not Bradley. Yep. I don't know why, where I got Brad. Maybe. Oh, I know what it is. Brasley is what where I got yeah. that from. Hmm. Well, we got Genius. several new guys in there. I see Gage Rollins in there and Ryan Pi or excuse me, Matthew Powers in there. Um and sixty eight Wilt Leonard in there. Uh I saw Harper Shelton in there earlier. Uh we got a quite a few new Hornets in there. So Billy Jack Gregory here on the near side still in there, but yeah, you see a lot of white jerseys. Yep. Screen pass right there, tracking it down. Is that that's number forty five, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's Neil O'Brien making a good play. He's uh, a freshman. I see uh, Russ Holly at the other defensive end over there. Uh, looks like the Cougars are going to call timeout right here. Did you here. say Matthew Powers? He's Matthew, in there, yep. seventy seven. Uh -huh. Highly, is yep. that any relation to? To Bert Hiley when he when we were first, I think they're cousins, cousins. or something. I just yeah. was wondering. Normally, when you hear names, yeah. you probably relate it somehow. Yeah, um, you remember Meg who yeah, played softball. Yeah. That's that's, that's her, her brother, her bro younger brother. He's a freshman this year. Oh yeah, I remember Meg Hiley. Yep. Well, it's uh, it's been a successful night here for the Hornets. Obviously, it started out a little slow, but they've turned it on and to score half a hundred on a on a team is. Not easy, no. but you feel you feel comfortable that you're gonna win the ball game when you do that. Hey, I mean, you know, it's all about getting the W in the end. But yep. um, right now for Westfield, I think part of this is, uh, and, and I have heard that Bethlehem is is much improved, so that'll be an interesting matchup. But sometimes it's uh, almost heading in, looking and narrowing and getting closer to the end of the regular season and heading towards well, the playoff. It's a, sometimes yeah. about. More about how you play. Yeah, so you want to be fine tuned, right? As as you get near, I mean, when you get into your region games, and then as you get toward the playoffs. So, fourth down and five here. Brasley gonna swing it out, and that ball nice is job. a tackle. Yeah, it's like he's gonna be. Is that Dante? They give him. Yeah. A, they gonna give him a good it spot. It is Dante right there. Ernest. And he's going to get the first down. I thought we had uh, he, he gotten a stop right there. It's definitely close, but he picks up the first down. Dante Ernest has been the – him and Gibson have been the go-to receivers yep. tonight for mm -hmm. Brasley. And I'll tell you, they're good football players. So we'll see if Brasley can get the Cougars into the end zone. Brasley going to drop back, looking to throw, going to throw deep. And ball just a little too yeah. far, trying yep. to get the ball to number 10. I think if he puts a little bit more air under that one, it's his touchdown. That's Malcolm Cortland. He's trying to get the football, too. Going to have to hustle here to get one yeah. more off. Well, yeah. they may take a timeout. Yeah, we'll say here. Timeout. It's got a little cool. Mm -hmm. So I brought my hoodie yeah. just in case. Of course, you had one, too. Yeah. You planned appropriately, but <laughs> yeah, my, I guess you're going to have to bring two from now my, on. Yeah, my daughter did not plan this as appropriately, but at least you're at least you're sporting the Braves. Uh, hey, got to have some hope. Hopefully, I mean they're up three two for a reason, but they got kind of a tough road to yeah, I'm I'm not as optimistic, but I'm trying. I'm Hopefully, trying something ha something good happens. That's all you can at this point. Well, it should good, be over right well, now. But, but the good thing is you're you're in the friendly confines of Truist Park, and hopefully. Hopefully that means some good things for the Braves. I'm just looking for them. We have had, and we can talk a little bit more, but we've had Riley be hot and Rosario be hot, and now Freeman's hot. Westfield was offsides, but they did yeah. not call it. Uh, Brasley going to throw it deep to the end zone. Ball caught and inside the five-yard line yep. just short, and that's going to be tough for them. Yep. They're going to have to call a timeout, and they do. They call their third timeout. Yeah, they call, They had to or else they weren't going to get yeah. the playoff probably. A great pass right there by Brasley. But I'm just hoping maybe, if maybe, all three of those guys can get going at the same time in one game, and that may, may yep. mean some good things for the Bravos. But we'll see uh, what happens. I hope so. I'd like to see them in another World Series. It's been quite a while. Absolutely. Yeah, it's only us old guys remember that. 22 years, I think, is what? 1999. Yep. And they got blasted in that one, I think. Rolling to his left, looking to throw Brasley. Going to throw it to the back of the end zone, and 
I think that's number 11, yeah, yeah. Christopher Ernest. And that's going to be the end of the ball game. And they're going to do the point after touchdown. Your score is 50 to 14 right now. We'll see if Creekside did go for two on their previous touchdown. Yeah, I have a question. Will that you think that will affect no, anything in the power it rankings? Shouldn't. It shouldn't. There, it, uh, I think I think it's a 30 point cap. Gotcha. I so think is, is what it is. Just well, it to doesn't prevent, benefit you just anymore. Just to prevent people from running from it up, running it up on right. people and doing things that create a lot of. Heartburn. <laughs> yeah, ill will towards yep. one another. You don't want that to happen. No. So a win's a win. We'll take it. We'll roll on to next week with uh, Bethlehem Christian coming to town. Yeah, I'll get back to the Hornet's Nest and get to see how uh, how improved Bethlehem is. I hear good things, and uh, it'll be interesting to, to see how Westfield kind of performs moving forward and – Probably their two biggest games of the season coming up at home. Yeah. And then uh, you roll into that John Millage week after that, hopefully after a win, and see how that goes. And then you're into the playoffs. Yep. So I would assume as long as it's not, uh, depending on the outcome, as long as it's not something crazy one way or the other, Westfield and John Millage are going to be in those top two or three spots, yeah, you would think. Yeah, I, I would think so. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how it will all shake out. And, you know, it just takes some time to – you know, a couple of weeks, you know, it's like everything else. You, you never know how it's going to shake out in a right. couple of weeks. So, uh, I'm not sure why we're even having to administer this PAT right here. I thought it only you only had to administer it if it made a difference in the ball game. It should be 50 to 14 right now. Well, we're going to see what happens right here. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I thought uh, the rule, as I understood it, was you only had to you only had to do it if you. What do you do? You're still on. If you uh, needed to, if it made a difference in the game. So. Right. So well, that's the ball game. That's the ball game. Westfield wins. 50 to 40, excuse me, 50 to 14, and they will move to 6 and 1 on the season. We'll quickly go into our Westfield Booster Club post game show and our Sonic player of the game. Oh my goodness, it could be a multitude. Yeah. I'm going to go Ryan Powers I, tonight. I, I would agree. I, you know, I was sort of leaning toward uh, Bryant Greer there in the first yeah, half. Yeah, he but, played good on defense. But, but Ryan, no Ryan did a bunch of really Cole good Cole Miller things, had so. some really big so, yeah, blocks. So um, you, you could yeah. go to a bunch of people, but I, I would agree. I think Ryan Powers is the guy. So we'll uh, say so long here tonight from McDonough.